your cybersecurity solution is here. Introducing Pentester's Advanced Cybersecurity Suite. Ready for peace of mind? Try it for free. No credit card required. Pentester.com. In 1978, when I went to prison, he was just, he was still doing that bit and he came home on a furlough. So the murder took place in 73, then he got arrested and then he was probably out on bail for a while. Well, from what I understand is James McBratney had a crew. They were an Irish crew, dangerous. Um, and they were, for some reason, they decided that they were going to kidnap both relatives of wise guys because naturally wise guys aren't going to go to the cops. And Neil got the contract, you know, and that was John's claim to fame. And John was in on the murder, but John didn't pull the trigger. You know, from my understanding is McBratney saw it coming and refused to leave. Hello, everybody. I want to welcome everybody to Reform Gangsters. My name is Anthony Ruggiano Jr. And if you like our content, please hit the subscribe button and become a member. Also, um, don't forget about my Patreon. Join my Patreon. We just filmed all my new episodes in a nice theater in the studio. So um, they go up in about a week. So it makes it easy for the membership as low as a dollar a month. So come on, you know, get put up a dollar and check it out. And, and I'm sure you're going to like some stuff. We used the quality production and we lowered the price. So please join my Patreon. So next week, I'm going to have a special guest on. His name is Joe McBratney. And for all you mob people out there, I'm sure McBratney rings a bell. Um, his father was James McBratney, um, who was murdered in Staten Island by John Gotti, Angelo Quack, and another person uh, who actually did the shooting. It's a famous murder, mob murder. It's on every documentary. Every time you see a show about John Gotti, you see uh, James McBratney laying on the floor in a pool of blood. blood. Um, I have just recently befriended his son, Joe, um, who had to live through that. And, you know, it's the other side of the fence. You know, I was raised by wise guys and his father was killed by wise guys. You know, it's a big dynamic. So he's going to be a guest next week to talk about his life and how he dealt with uh, addiction and how he dealt with the murder of his father and how he deals with seeing it all over the TV. Every time he turns on the TV, a documentary about the mob, you know, he has to see his father laying in a pool of blood. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a very interesting show. And uh, I hope everybody tunes in to check it out. So his, his, James McBratney was killed in 1973 when he was kidnapping all wise guys' relatives. You know, I, I had to stay in my neighborhood. My father was aware of what was going on because Carlo Gambino's nephew was kidnapped and uh, we were, weren't allowed to leave our neighborhood. Um, I remember I had to stay in Ozone Park. My father was around all the time at night. He, he stood in the neighborhood to keep an eye on us. You know, I was only 19 years old at the time. My brother was just 16. Um, so uh, um, I was a young man when that happened. And I remember when it happened, you know, I remember it happening that I remember John getting arrested for it and going to, to prison for it. It was a while before he went to prison because in 1978, when I went to prison, he was just, he was still doing that bit and he came home on a furlough. So the murder took place in 73, then he got arrested and then he was probably out on bail for a while because in 1978, he came home on a furlough and became a main member of the Gambino family, him and Angela. They must have had a connection in Greenhaven prison because there was no way they would get the seven day furlough without a connection. And they came home on a furlough and I actually saw them. That's the story I told about him paying for my haircut of father and son the day I had to surrender myself in March of 78. And he said, what are you doing here? Go home to your wife. Uh, and that's, and he was home on that furlough from that murder. So, um, that's my little tidbit concerning that ma that murder. Well, from what I understand is James McBratney had a crew. They were an Irish crew, dangerous. Um, and they were, for some reason, they decided that they were going to kidnap both uh, relatives of wise guys because naturally wise guys aren't going to go to the cops and they would pay the money. But I mean, they had to know eventually they were going to get murdered. I mean, you know, you especially 
at that time, I mean, today, who knows? Today, maybe they might get away with it. But, you know, in 1973, they were definitely not getting away with it. You know what I mean? And, I, and you know, when I think about it, it was really they went on a suicide mission, especially when they kidnapped a relative of Carlo Gambino, who was more powerful than him. Well, from what I understand is they kidnapped Carlo Gambino's nephew. They, they got paid and the kid was murdered anyway. I guess maybe the kid saw one of their faces. I don't know what the, what transpired. I don't know the inside details, but all I know is they kidnapped um, Carl's nephew and he was killed. And, uh, and you know, and, um, and Neil got the contract, you know, and that was John's claim to fame. And John was in on the murder, but John didn't pull the trigger. You know, from my understanding is Rick Bratton saw it coming and refused to leave the bar, put up a struggle. And he was gunned down in the bar in front of a whole you know, group of people that later on identified the three people that came in there, John, Angelo. And for some reason, I can't think of the third guy's name. It's on the tip of my tongue. But uh, and, the third, and the guy that actually did the shooting, to my knowledge, he later on was murdered himself. That's the hit they claim John got straightened out over. But I mean, John would have got straightened out regardless if he did that hit or not. I mean, him and Angelo were going to get made regardless because you didn't have to do a hit in the 70s to get made. I mean, I know a lot of guys that got straightened out that didn't do, you know, do any work at all. You know what I mean? A lot of guys. So, uh, you know, like guys, my father and Tony straightened out. They didn't do any work per se, but they were in on hits that didn't take place like Carmine Lamadoza, they were supposed to clip him. And, and you know, and they did work, but it was off the books, you know, off the record. So uh, they were capable of, of it. You know, they were known to be capable of it, just like John and his crew were known to be capable of it. So I think, you know, John would have got made no matter what. I mean, that just escalated. That just made it a shooing. You know, that's a, a question I get all the time is who actually did John Gotti shoot? And I can't answer that question. You know, all I know is he was, a he, he was, you know, I'm sure he pulled the trigger. He had no problem being involved in murders, ordering murders. You know, he had no issue with it. He was a killer. No matter what anybody says about him, well, he didn't, never pulled the trigger. That, you know, he was a killer. You know, he was someone you didn't want to play around with. He was someone you didn't want to mess with. And you know, he, he, he caused people to lose their lives one way or the other. Attention all realtors. Check out ListingTiger.com. Revolutionize your real estate listings with AI-powered descriptions that sell properties. Check out ListingTiger.com. Use code MAGICLIST2024 for the first month free. You know, I get questions all the time, political questions. I don't like to get into the political arena. I do lean to the right. Um, I'll tell you that I definitely lean to the right. Um, um, they asked me to compare Trump to Gotti. I mean, you know, um, you know, Trump's a legitimate businessman, an intelligent guy. John was an intelligent guy. You know, they both created something, you know, um, they both created monster businesses. I mean, you know, uh, John, you know, rose from the gutter to, to be the boss of the Gambino family. You know, Trump took whatever he and his father gave him a couple of million when he was a kid. And, you know, he 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 became a billionaire behind it. Um, they're both, uh, you know, um, from what I understand from Sammy, the bull Trump was untouchable. You know, they could never get to Trump. He was too well insulated, too smart to do business with them. Um, you know, I got this personally right from, out of Sammy the bull's mouth that, you know, his guys wanted to push up on Trump and they couldn't do it. You know, he was always surrounded by retired FBI agents and, you know, and, and he wouldn't allow the mob to get close to him. So, uh, but, you know, how are you going to compare, you know, did, did John kill all the people to be killed? Yeah. Did Trump order people to be killed? He did. I mean, he killed the that Iranian guy. But, you know, these, he deserved to get killed, that Iranian guy, you know, the Bag Baghdadi, whatever his name was, that he, he blew up, you know. But there's no comparison. One's a criminal, you know, uh, Trump's not. You know, they could say all they want about Trump. You know, did he did he work in the gray area? They all do. But, you know, I don't want to get political, but it's crazy because people ask this question, you know, like. To me right now, this we're living in the twilight zone. I mean, come on, this guy that's in the White House now, it's scary. When I look at this guy on TV, I got to mute the sound because I, I don't want to hear him because I, I get scared when I listen to this guy talk. I mean, it's 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 out of, it's outrageous. You know, things have to change. Um, this morning, I'm in the gym, 
and and I'm not a holy roller, you know, I'm Catholic. I, I go to church whenever I can. Um, you know, um, I believe, you know, in Christ and all that, but you know, I, I'm not a preacher. I don't, you know, I'm not a Bible thumper. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that because there isn't, God bless them. I wish I had that kind of courage and faith. Believe me, I wish I did. But, uh, you know, I go, I'm in the gym this morning and I'm on the treadmill and, it, and, and, there's, and there's, you know, there's two TVs on. Um, one has CNN and one has Fox News. And, um, and, and it comes on the TV um, that they're having a Easter art show on the White House lawn today that Biden's going to go to an Easter art show on the White House lawn. And the administration, the White House administration, Biden, who professes to be a Catholic, who goes to church on Sunday, who receives communion, you could have, you could bring art, but you can't bring any religious art. Only so it's an Easter art show, but you can't bring any religious art. <laughs> I mean. I, I don't even know what to say. Like, I, I don't get Easter is because of, you know, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, right? So here you are. You're a Catholic president that goes to church on Sunday, and you're allowing this to happen. Like, where's your faith? Where's your courage? Like, it's Easter, Easter weekend, and you're having an art show at the White House that represents everybody. And you can't bring no Christian out there when this is a Christian holiday. It's not an Easter Bunny holiday. It's a Christian holiday. You know, it's just, you know, it, 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 you know, he's he's got no balls. And then there's another thing I saw on the news too, right? So now, now, now I'm pissed off already about what I read. I'm on the treadmill and I'm and I'm and I'm, and I'm, and I'm pissed off, right? And then they have this thing. I think it's called Title Nine, where. He's got to sign something about transgender athletes competing against females, athletes, you know, natural, you know, um, female, real female athletes. Now, I'm not homophobic. I have a niece that's gay. I love her daily. She comes to my house all the time with her girlfriend. I love her girlfriend. They don't even like what's going on. When I talk to her about what's going on, they don't like it. You know, they, they tell me Uncle Ant. Just be gay. <laughs> you know, can't everybody just be gay? You know, so now he's got to sign this bill, and you know he's going to sign it to allow biological men to compete against biological women. You know he's going to do it, but what he did, because he's got no balls, he postponed it because he don't want to sign it because of the election, because he don't want to piss off half the country. So he they pushed it off to the side. But we all know what he's going to do with it. I mean, it's not it. We know what he's going to do. He's going to he's going to he's going to sign it, and then men are going to compete against women. Now, that's great. Now that's crazy. Caitlyn Jenner. Who's more transgender than Caitlyn Jenner? Who is more transgender than Bruce? Bruce. Bruce won the triathlon. Now he's Jenner. Okay, fine. You want to be Jenner? Be Jenner. I saw him on TV, and he's against it. She's against it. Excuse me. Let me get the right pronoun here. I might lose my job because that's another thing I got to worry about on my job. Because God forbid I call a man a him when he did, identifies as a woman, I get fired. So now he's on TV, she's on TV, and she's against it. What more do you need to know? You know, but this is the world we live in. Like I said, I don't like, you know, I get all riled up, you know, um, it's just, I don't know what's going on anymore, you know. Uh, uh, you know, I tell my daughter all the time, you know, like when 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 the next generation of generation generation after her gets hold of this country, I'll be dead. You know what I mean? I'm just going to be 71 soon, so I don't know what's going on. You know, I went out this morning, gas is $3.69 a gallon. It, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's crazy, you know. You go to McDonald's, it costs you fifteen dollars to buy a Big Mac. I mean, come on. I ordered rice and chicken the other day. It cost me twenty four dollars. I mean, where are we going? I mean, where are we going? It's 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 crazy. If you enjoy my show, please join my Patreon. Ask your questions live. 
And please uh, join my Patreon at reformgangsters.com.